We will start by accessing to MCU selector. The selector has, has been opened and we see the list of all the microcontrollers that are available on ST. So there are plenty of them and they are all shown on this table. On the left side, we have the capability to, to search or to filter by the parametric search. Okay. Uh, what I also want to show you is that we have a board selector that is showing you all available boards that you can that allow you to quickly start with STM32 demos. For instance, you will have find a nuclear board, you will find discovery board, or you, or you will find uh, the big evaluation board. The first thing are example selector. Examples are available with our Cube firmware packages and all of them which are available there are also listed in this table. So you will see plenty of them available for various boards. On the first column you see the name of the example and the second column is displaying on which board it can be run. If you have it on your, on your PC already you will see the green dot otherwise you can still download it from the web. The example selector allows you to grab the example from the repository, copy it to your own folder, and then lets you start the project directly from this example. This can be quite useful if you want to evaluate uh, and test some of the peripherals. In our example, we will go back to MCU slash MPU selector. And uh, for this example and demonstration, we will be using the Nucleo G0B1. So I will manually type the microcontroller that is on the board, which is STM32 G0B1RE. So we are using the RET6 in LQFP64 package. So I select the product and I click Start Project. So the project has been created and immediately we see the footprint, the top view footprint of the product. Um, in this example, we will be enabling two things. First, we will uh, turn on the one output as a LED, and then we will enable the low power UART in asynchronous mode. So let's start by enabling the LED pin. Um, on the nuclear board, the LED pin is connected to the pin PA5. So we have to find the PA5, so we can manually search for it, okay? Or we can type in the search box PA5, and the Cubemix will automatically toggle the, the, uh, the pin, the one that has been found. So we, we see it here, I can click on it, I click output, and I can also assign its own name. So right click, enter user label, and I will type LED because this will be our LED. Then in order to enable the peripherals or to configure the peripherals, we will go to the left side where we see the list of categories, such as system core, analog, timers, connectivity, and many others. Uh, we can browse here, we can click on it to expand the view, we see FDK and I2C, LPUR, SPI, and so on. Or we can click on A to Z, and we see list of all available in one big list. So in this case, I will look for LPUR1, and I will click on it. And our aim is to configure it in, in asynchronous mode. We do this by enabling the mode to the asynchronous. As you can see, the QMX immediately assigned two pins for LPUR RX and LPUR TX, and as well allows us to make a detailed configuration of the peripheral. So for instance, we can set the baud rate to our preferred one. I will in this case select 115,200, uh, 115, and I will select the work length to eight bits. One point I want to show you is that, for instance, by default, the Cubemix assigned PC0 and PC1 as a RX and TX pins, respectively. If these pins, for some reason, are not a good fit for your design, we can try to remap them. The quickest way is by holding the control pin, click on the pin, and the Cubemix will show us the alternate options for the same peripheral. And then we can just drag and drop the pin to the location. And now, for instance, lpur one rx has been assigned to PA3. We can do the same for TX. The second step in the configuration of the microcontroller is the clock configuration. The clock configuration is very big, uh, can be very complex, but thanks to our dedicated tool, it is very, very easy and very simple to configure it. The, by, the easiest way is to type selected clock of the system in the small, in the small box. In this case, we can see that the 64 
uh, megahertz is the maximum one, so we can enter 64 and press enter. So the configurator manually search for all the possibilities in order to fulfill our demand. So the clock is now set to 64 megahertz. The first step is to go to the project manager and to select the project name. For instance, uh, Nucleo G0B1RE test. And we can select the, the tool chain. I will select the STM32 cube ID. And this is the minimum what we need to do. And simply we can generate the code. The project has been successfully generated and we can immediately open it in our favorite toolchain. Project has been successfully imported into the STM32Cube ID workspace. So we can go now on the left side, we can expand the project and we see two folders. One is the drivers folder with our drivers, with our HL or LL drivers, depends which one you select during the code generation. And a second folder is the core one where we can focus on our application. And it also includes the main.c file. In main.c, very quickly to go through, we will see two new functions, in particular the MX GPI init and MX low power UART init that have been created because we initialized these two uh, peripherals during our QMX code configuration. And these two functions are also being called into the main function. Finally, if we try to compile the code, we see that the code compiles successfully and we can run it in our, on our board.